One of the most common questions that I get inside our grant funding formula course is how much preliminary data do I need in an R01 grant? So that is what we are talking about today. If you're new around here, my name is Sarah Dobson. I am a research grant consultant and my team and I help early career researchers get funded at NIH. So how much preliminary data do you need uh, when you're writing an R01? And the answer is, of course, it depends. Um, but let's talk first about why you need preliminary data and why it's so important. And that should help you figure out the quantity and the quality of the preliminary data you need to be competitive with a grant like an R01. So I think most people are familiar with the idea of using preliminary data to speak to the feasibility of the project that you are proposing, right? So the idea there is to say, look, we have experience with the experiments, the techniques, the analysis, the different elements uh, of the application that you are proposing, the different elements of the, the sort of project and the approach that you're proposing. And your, your argument is to say, look, we can do this. We've done it before. We have the experience. You're in good hands or, or this project is in good hands. And that, of course, is very important to the overall success of the project because one of the big things that reviewers are always looking at is feasibility. So one of the key ways to do that is to make that argument through your preliminary data to say, yeah, we've, we've done this before. We know what we're doing. We are familiar with all of the, again, techniques and um, approaches that we are proposing here. And this is especially important if you are proposing something that is relatively novel, um, technically, uh, or... Uh, even conceptually, right? So that's something that you that you definitely want to consider. And I think that's a, that's fairly fairly well known as a um, as a purpose for preliminary data. But I think one area where PIs get really um, get really tripped up or maybe don't understand the full potential of their preliminary data is around its utility in, uh, setting up the scientific premise of the the project that you are proposing and really arguing for why this research needs to be done in the first place. And that, in my view, is one of the key sort of rhetorical uses for preliminary data to, to really bolster that argument to say, here's why it's important that we do this research and you're you're sort of getting at that by saying, look, we're really onto something here. We've we've started down this path, and we found some really interesting things, and that's leading us either to some new questions or or really wanting to to dig in and and make sure that what we're seeing is actually real and true. So that is why we are proposing what we're proposing. And so this is going to look different depending on the type of grant that you are proposing. And, and by type, I mean whether your grant is hypothesis-driven or not. And so if your grant is hypothesis-driven, your preliminary data really serves to establish how you arrived at your overarching hypothesis, right? So for every hypothesis-driven R01, there's going to be sort of a, an overarching hypothesis that encompasses all of the aims that you are proposing. And you need to kind of show your work in terms of how you arrived at that central hypothesis. And one of the most effective ways to do that is to use your preliminary data to establish that sort of scientific premise um, and the, the, the central hypothesis. You can also use other key evidence from the literature to establish that central hypothesis, but one of the key ways to do that um, is, to, is to use your own preliminary data as the main sort of foundational source of that central hypothesis. The other type of grant that um, that you would see in an R01 context is something that um, I call 
a tool development grant, right? And so that's where you are either sort of building or validating some kind of tool. And, and generally speaking, the, the joke that we make with, um, with PIs who we work with in tool development grants is that the hypothesis is, I will build it and it will work. And that's not a real hypothesis, right? And so in, in those types of grants, what you're doing instead is sort of arguing for the, the main objective of your project, which is to create this tool or develop this tool and, and use it for some, you know, important purpose, uh, a purpose that's important to human health, right? And so there it's not necessary or it, it doesn't doesn't really make sense to have a central hypothesis, but but the the concept still applies, right? You're still trying to show your work and show how you arrived at the main objective of your application or your your project, right? And so the idea there would be to show maybe some of the early work that you have done that is kind of pushing you in a certain direction when it comes to the development of this tool. Or maybe it's work that you've done that establishes the necessity of developing such a tool, right? And so that's that's the the utility of preliminary data in those um, sort of tool development grants, as as we call them, um, with our clients. And so again, the the main two purposes of preliminary data that you really need to consider when you're working on a grant. Uh, of an R01 size and scope is feasibility. You know, can we do what we say we're going to do and where's the proof, right? And then it's around the scientific premise. That's the second component uh, of preliminary data, the second sort of um, usefulness for preliminary data is around uh is around making sure that you are establishing the scientific premise of what you're doing and showing how you arrived at either your overarching hypothesis or your main objective. And so if you found this helpful, we have plenty more tools and resources for you inside our free resource library. So I definitely recommend that you check that out if you haven't. There is a link in the description below this video where you can go and sign up for the free resource library. And inside there, we have all sorts of tutorials and other tools for you to use 